Hey you, are your pawns disappointing? Do you feel like your team lacks proper synergy? Or maybe you want to spice things up just for fun? Well, either way, you've come to the right place. Because here I present my top 5 most fun and powerful team setups. Particular compositions of pawns that I have found to be exquisite. That is our goal today, ladies and jabronis. So let's jump right into it. First up, we coming out the gate real strong with the most chad-tastic team on this list. The Straight Savage Squad. Just look at this squad, man. A team full of mighty warriors and fierce fighters. Plus one book nerd. Got my main pawn, Old Horn Dog, as a supporting mage. Playing as the warrior myself with another warrior and fighter battling alongside me. Together, we form a battle-hardened triple threat. Threat. We out here steamrolling and clotheslining bitches like Hulk Hogan. Two warriors and one fighter is just the right amount of brute force. Because the fighter is more nimble and adept at mounting monsters much more than a warrior is. So the fighter keeps the team balanced and takes the initiative on leaping up onto monsters. While we warriors stand our ground performing a non-stop onslaught of heavy attacks dealing massive knockdown power. With the mage in the back supporting us with health regeneration generation and other buffing spells. With the help from our mage, we become an unstoppable force that shows no mercy. I mean, hell, we'll punch a baby out here, bro. Even if a baby dared cross our path, we will sucker punch that little rascal right in the face without a second thought. We have no morals, only the bloodthirsty urge to decimate any creature we come across, like straight savages. Now you want one of your pawns to have the springboard skill, so at least one of y'all can use it if needed. And other than that, I don't recommend any specific skills. Just get out there and start bunking the hell out of everything you see. Here we have the Captain's Men. The Magic Archer's combat style is basically chilling in the back, firing off a barrage of arrow skills. But you have more responsibilities here because you are the general, the captain of this crew, as you alone possess the ability to heal and revive teammates and inflict debilitations. I mean, you can do it all, baby. However, you need your space. As a Magic Archer, you really must avoid the front lines, avoid engaging directly with the enemies. Instead, here you allow your three fighters, your three wild stallions to gallop forth, running amok around the front lines, bashing skulls, causing chaos, and sucking up all the aggro. If you do not want entirely all fighters, it can be two fighters plus one warrior for a bit more oonga boonga power, or two fighters plus one thief for more proficient mounting onto monsters. Regardless, you want a squad of loyal combat soldiers that will dive head first in the enemy's booty while you as the magic archer support them from a safe distance. Now at the risk of sounding corny, I gotta say, this feels like a true musical battle symphony. You got the fighters providing a thunderous percussion, striking at drums. Meanwhile, you stand behind and play a haunting melody on your enchanted bow. Each of your arrows dancing in the sky are the notes in your musical composition. <laughs> you will be the primary source of targeting enemies with debilitations like burning or freezing. It is also your role to provide your allies with much needed healing. A responsibility that a mage would typically uphold, but now it's on you to keep your soldiers alive using your remedy shot skill. This skill is like shooting them up full of morphine and saying, get the f back in the fight, soldier. For skills, you definitely want the remedy shot, then a couple elemental skills like Frost Seeker Bolt and Blaze Fang Arrow. I have found this team to be extremely effective, possibly the most effective team on this list but also enjoyable. Up next, we got the Pyro Menaces. 
Now with this squad, you are playing as the fighter with your main pawn as an archer. The main strategy here is to have your archer priming monsters with debilitations, performing skills like tarring shot, tarring the enemy. And because I am wielding the fighter's molten fury, I can easily set the monster ablaze, which will not only increase the fire damage drastically, but they are then more likely to be knocked off balance. I guess drowning in flames is bad for the equilibrium. In addition to tarring shot, archers can drench enemies too with a drenching shot. So make sure your two spellcasters have both lightning and freezing ice spells on stock. Because once the monster is drenched, a couple ice blizzards, and boom, that booty is frozen shut. Got one big ol' stinky cyclopsicle. And then, like I said, have lightning spells too, because when drenched, the lightning will be buffed as well. Now, having both a mage and a sorcerer can be very powerful and very helpful, but it's on you to protect them, because with a team like this, you are the only melee fighter. If they get bum-rushed by a mob of hooligans, they get and beat the hell up. I mean, imagine a really old dude getting jumped by a bunch of pimple-faced teenagers. That's what it's gonna be if you don't distract and pull aggro like a champ to protect your spellcasters. Oh my lanta, dude, look at all the bodies. This was a bloodbath. Let's, let's just take a moment of silence to respect the fallen souls. <laughs> Nah, fuck them bitches, yo, they deserved it. I hope Satan is shoving a pineapple up they ass right now down in hell, little Ricky style. So yeah, fighter, main pawn as an archer, then a mage and a sorcerer. The mage mainly using supportive spells like healing and celerity, while the sorcerer focuses on ice and lightning offensive spells. Here we have the Monster Hunters, a band of thieves and criminals making a living by slaying monsters, specifically the big boy monsters, because that's where you earn the real buko bucks. With three thieves in total, and old Horndog there supporting us with magic, this squad specializes in boss fights. I mean, imagine two, three of us grappling the monster, gouging out flesh, and shoving bombs up their noses, all together. It ends up becoming a fiesta. Even without the strong knockdown power from a warrior or fighter, we of course can still deal heavy damage. Though I will admit, without the strength to straight barrel through mobs, it can get fairly annoying. I mean, even though they're just Weenie Hut Jr. goblins, they can still slap a thief around. Now, with this team, you live and die by the AI. Of course, a pawn has limited intellect, so they won't perform the same badass moves that like we can as a thief. No, as a thief pawn, you can find them either standing in the corner, picking their nose, or straight up using skull splitter right on the heart of a dragon, dealing insane damage. One extreme or the other, though they do manage to get up in there and get their fill, you know, earn their share. I mean, just look at my man. Oh, he's going hard. He's getting in there real nice. We going crazy together. You love to see it. Like I said, we are a band of thieves, delinquents, straight scallywaggers. So of course, I found thieves with the stealing skill. My thieves will scrounge up everything they can. I'm talking materials, eternal shards, sacks of gold, even the goddamn pocket lint. They leaving nothing behind once they get their grubby little fingers inside your pockets. Also, it'd be pretty gnarly to use a collection of spite daggers, because spite can inflict poison. So if at least two of you have the spite dagger, then you are more than likely blighting that monster. Infect him with that COVID-91. He's gonna need a couple Tylenol PMs, a, a handful of Advils after fucking with you. For skills, make sure your mage has Ice Boon so everybody can get their frost on and Celerity because the thief is already fast. So if you boost his speed even more with Celerity, then you zoom in, baby. Now here up next, I have a quick bonus team for y'all. But before we jump into that, if you've made it this far in the video, please Griffin Dive Bomb on that like button. 
I really appreciate any support from y'all. And if you would like to further engage with the gaming community, then check out our We Kings Gaming Discord. I invite you to come be part of this growing community. The link to this Discord is down below. Alrighty then, let's move forward with this quick bonus team. This one is meant for all you hardcore gamers that haven't touched grass in a week because you've been too busy grinding Dragon's Dogma. Well, unfortunately for you, the game is too easy now on account of being such a high level. So this team setup is meant to optimize fun and give yourself a bit of a challenge. So we are using only two pawns instead of three. We have an archer and a fighter. And just like with the other team, we have our main pawn as the archer using target shot for priming monsters with debilitations because I mean setting Cyclops on fire just never gets old and then we got a fighter to help take aggro so it doesn't get overwhelming and annoying now for me the player I'm choosing Spearhand for this team because in my opinion Spearhand has a high skill ceiling and with experience can be the most fun now, Spearhand isn't the greatest for taking on multiple enemies up close like the fighter or thief can. You would rather be bopping around, shooting off magic, launching bodies everywhere, lots of strategic movement. So, having a fighter on the battlefield with you will help disperse the aggro and mitigate lots of frustration. But no mage, because again, it's a challenge team, so having a mage to heal you would just be too easy. Now, as a spear hand, you still have the ability to protect your team with these bubble shields. Turn your entire team into bubble boys. Though it only lasts a few seconds, it is very solid defensively. So it's on you to use these bubbles to protect your fellow soldiers. And finally, the most powerful, most deadly, most dominating, yet most frail team on this list. The Soul Spellcaster Clan. Yes sir, you heard that right. It sounds insane, but I mean think, if you can actually make it work, holy moly, y'all will be powerful. Got old horn dog here as my mage, of course, of course. Gandalf the sorcerer, okay, all right. And another sorcerer named Olive. Uh, hold up, what am I looking at right now? Precisely when a curative is needed, master. Oh my god, oh my, yo, what the fuck is this, bro? Olivia? Not so the arisen, I see. No, 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 whose mans is this? Whose mans is this? To be honest, whoever created this uh, majestic creature is an absolute madman, and I respect you for it. Now, a couple important aspects to make this magical team work. First of all, you have just one mage, and he is going to focus solely on healing and supporting y'all. He is your doctor, and he should have the kind-hearted inclination. That is important, because this will engage his supportive nature, doubling his efforts on teamwork. Then, another important aspect for your sorcerers. Make each of them established with their own unique solid set of spells. I mean, maybe this one is proficient in fire spells, and then this dude excels in lightning spells. Have them all fill their own individual role, so your team has diversity. Wait. What in the hell's diversity? Though on the other hand, I do recommend that nearly all of you have at least one ice spell, like Haggle. Because if you got two or three ice blizzards swirling around all at once, that monster is definitely freezing up. I don't care if he's got the fires of hell raging inside him. You will indubitably freeze that bitch's nuts off with this much frosty power. So yeah, make sure everyone's got at least one ice frost skill, and then go for a more broad, diverse set of skills after that. Hey yo, y'all seeing what I'm seeing right now? Olivia! Alright, after traumatizing y'all with that majestic creature, it is now your turn to comment your opinion on this video. And please, share any unique, fun, or powerful pawn team setups that you know of down below in the comment section. I thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Stay golden.